Well, hello, Healthy Pets family. Welcome. Happy Friday to you all. I wanted to jump on and do a quick Facebook Live about peanuts and peanut butter because I did a post a couple weeks ago talking about peanut butter. And I was a little overwhelmed at the number of people saying, oh my gosh, you can't feed nut butters to dogs. And I thought, where did this crazy myth get started? But it's out there and it's actually a pretty polarizing topic. Joining me today is Rodney Habib. We are at the Creators Lounge. Thank you for hosting me here and welcome to Healthy Pets. And thanks so much for having me. And hello, Facebook world. Welcome to such an important <laughs> and popular topic, peanut butter. In fact, according to statistics today, the all-time highest consumption ever of peanut butter, especially by Americans, eight pounds a year of consumption. And that's just not for American families, but of course that's being shared down to our furry family as well. So whether you're like stuffing Kongs to keep your dog busy with peanut butter, whether you're making those like DIY pet treats at home and your top ingredients peanut butter, or even if you're trying to give your meds to your pet with mm -hmm. peanut butter, everybody is using peanut butter. And as you alluded to, because of these issues online and these myths, a lot of pet parents are bypassing the good peanut butters in the aisle and they're resorting to bad peanut butters. That's right. I, first of all, I'm totally guilty of that eight pounds of nut butters. I absolutely, in 2020, consumed, I bet, over 10 pounds of nut butters. For the purpose of today's Facebook Live, when we say nut butters, we're going to lump everything in that section in the grocery store into, into one category. So the truth is peanuts are not nuts. Peanuts are legumes. And we're going to talk about sunflower butter today. But that entire category of seed butter and legume butters, we're going to put them all together in the nut butters because that's where you're going to go in the grocery store to find them. So on today's agenda, we want to put more tools in your toolbox when trying to select a peanut butter. We're going to talk about the types of peanut butter that you're going to see on your grocery store shelves, the toxic nut myths right now that are circulating online, the health benefits. It's some of the nut butters that you might be passing on and check it out, a DIY nut butter recipe. So one of the things that I found interesting is the fact that peanut butters, the po most popular peanut butters in the US are actually called peanut butter spreads, which I didn't realize. There's like spread means something different than peanut butter. I had no idea. According to the FDA, when you look at your peanut butters, you really gotta pay attention here. If you see the word peanut butter, that means that the manufacturers have 90% peanuts or more inside of a jar. But if you see the word spread on a peanut butter, it could be like 60% peanuts and 40% of maybe not some good ingredients. And there's a reason for that. Because true nut butters look like this. They separate. When nuts are ground up, oil comes to the top. And then, of course, there's the separation that requires people to have to stir. And in North America, a lot of families are not into stirring. So for convenience and to improve mouthfeel, the top peanut butter companies actually add unhealthy products to peanut butter, not only to make it super creamy, even in the refrigerator, but there's a certain mouthfeel. It's, it's perfect. It's almost like velvet. So Jif and Skippy both have added hydrogenated oils and that's what makes it so creamy in addition to actually adding sugar. So yes, there's sugar and sugar's not so good, but far worse than sugar is hydrogenated oils. These oils are really bad for your entire family. In fact, one veterinary research paper shows that dogs eating hydrogenated oils, puppies in the lab didn't grow adequately, that it is such a burden to our family system. Nothing should be eating hydrogenated oils, actually partially hydrogenated hydrogenated vegetable oils have been banned in the U.S., but we still allow fully hydrogenated oils, and they're in peanut butter. They're in a lot of peanut butter. Now, the natural peanut butters have replaced hydrogenated oils with palm oil, and although you may think that that's better, palm oil in and of itself is an additional source of fat. There's still those added sugars, even in the natural peanut butters, and palm oils, are they're just not environmentally or ecologically sustainable. It's just... They're, they're not environmentally friendly oils. So avoid the palm oil and the hydrogenated oil at the same time. Well, this becomes a problem for people because of course, when you go onto the internet to try to find the better nut versions of peanut butter that you could purchase, mm -hmm. you are going to be bombarded by websites that tell you, hey man, be careful, be warned. Check out the ASPCA right there, human foods that you can't give. Peanuts, uh, nut butters, excuse me, walnut, pecans, Cashews, all of these different types of nuts are, are, could be potentially harmful for your dog. In fact, the number one searched Google article in the world by this blogger, who should do some information checking. Check it out here. Can dogs eat nuts good versus bad? Well, on their website, 
this number one article. It says you can feed peanuts and you can feed peanut butter no problem, but if you scroll down, all the other peanuts are potentially harmful and or toxic. So these types of articles, which abound, in fact, the, the if you just Google, should I feed, can I feed my dog peanut butter? Like the top three pages say no nuts, no nuts, no nuts. And my thought was, how did this come about? And I believe it's because I call it food fear. And I believe that we end up fearing a lot of foods because of how, because we are erroneously classifying these foods as toxic. So I want to spend two minutes this morning and talk about true toxins versus other risks. And nuts and seeds are a really good example to use. So the definition of truly toxic foods are foods that contain innate substances that are harmful for animals. So we went and we sought out, in my opinion, the very best source for knowing what's harmful for dogs and cats. That's the European Pet Food Association. They're called FEDIAF. FEDIAF says that there are indeed three human foods that are truly toxic to animals. And you can go to FEDIAF.org and you can read about this. And what they say is that the three foods that have to be avoided that we should never feed dogs and cats are grapes and raisins, members of the onion family, and chocolate. So these three foods absolutely should never be fed to animals because they're known toxins. But toxins, which are these three foods, are very different than medically inappropriate foods or foods that are a choking risk. And these are the terms that get completely jumbled when we have the conversation about seeds, nuts, and pets. So we call them toxic when really there are other issues. We scoured the literature trying to find studies or research demonstrating that nuts and seeds are toxic. And the truth is all of these seeds, sunflower seeds, almonds, cashews, Brazil nuts, pine nuts, peanuts, and walnuts, none of them have any innate toxins. They're all in and of themselves totally safe because macadamia nuts have very high fat. There's no known toxins that veterinary toxicologists can identify, but because of their high fat content, they can cause GI upset. So across the boards, veterinarians, including myself, say don't feed macadamia, they can cause GI upset. The conclusion of the toxicosis study is that nut tree nut butters and nuts are not toxic for animals, but macadamia nuts can cause GI upset, so we don't feed them. What that does mean is that what you read on the internet is that there are some lifestyle risks associated with nut butters. Of course, choking, this is a walnut, and if your dog gets a hold of this walnut, he could absolutely choke on it. Of course, seeds and nuts, uh, and the nut butters, like the hydrogenated oils, they, those added fats are totally unhealthy for animals, not toxic, just super unhealthy. Don't feed hydrogenated oils or palm oils to your dogs or cats. If your dog or cat has had pancreatitis, anything with fat, can be a, an inciting risk. So of course, animals with pancreatitis should have lower fat foods, but that doesn't mean that these foods are toxic. And I think that that's where the issue comes in. So when we think about nuts and nut butters, what are the actual risks? Well, there are a couple and they fall under the contaminants and additives category. So when we think about the risks, we have a mycotoxin risk and we have a xylitol risk. Those are the two toxin risks, and they come from additives or contaminants. So let's start first, Rodney, with contaminants. So those of you that happen to have a black walnut tree in your yard, you will know that black walnuts actually, walnuts are, believe it or not, a seed. And if you happen to have a black walnut tree in your yard, you will know that they're, these the walnuts come in a green husk that turns black that can absolutely harbor mycotoxins. So this is growing on your tree. This part can grow mycotoxins, which can be toxic to your dog. Inside of the fruit, this husk, which you should never feed to dogs because of the mycotoxin risk, is the actual seed. And the seed itself is safe and fine, other than it can be a choking risk. So if you are going to give walnuts to dogs, obviously you've got to give the inside soft piece that is totally non-toxic for animals to eat. And that's where the confusion comes in. Mycotoxins are not just found on the husks of walnut. So no walnut wood, no walnut bark, no walnut husks, but inside walnut safe and fine. That's not true of, let's say, peanuts. Peanuts have gotten a bad rap for mycotoxins. What's the scoop with that? Listen, aflatoxins, peanuts, these are very, very powerful words nowadays, especially the word aflatoxin, if you've been mm -hmm. following the media as of late. 
a hundred dogs plus have lost their lives to aflatoxin load in pet food, things like corn and other ingredients in pet food. These, this is a big, big concern for pet parents. Yeah. But when it comes to peanuts, check it out. The National Peanut Board has posted right here, according to the peanut board, um, the U.S., the FDA to date have claimed that there's never been a human illness outbreak caused by aflatoxins in the United States where foods are carefully regulated and inspected to prevent such an occurrence. So if you're worried about potentially dying from eating peanut butter and aflatoxins, it hasn't happened now. That's not to say in the pet space, it's not happening. So it's very important when you're buying your peanut butter, let's say you buy it from a retailer in a pet store, ask them. Who's been checking the peanuts? Is the FDA doing it? Is yeah. the CFIA doing it? You got to be careful when you're doing that. Or if you're animal nut butters, are they human grade? Because human grade products are inspected uh, and hopefully check for a mycotoxin levels. Now, the other issue, of course, the other nut butters, walnut, almonds, and things like that. You'll go online and say, be careful of those. There's more aflatoxins in them. Well, that's not actually factual. According to the Canadian government here who has done an inspection on nuts, the nut butters that have come into Canada, they inspected all these different variations of nut butters like walnut, almond pecans, you name it, zero, zero aflatoxins. And in a peanut butter, everything was well below the limits. Beautiful. So those are the natural things that can grow on legumes that you just need to be aware of. Additives. There is an additive that is absolutely toxic to dogs and cats, and that's xylitol. Now, what's interesting is that we tried to find xylitol-filled peanut butter in Canada. It was hard to find. Super hard yeah, to find. Yeah, so it's out there, but it's, and you need to absolutely read the labels. Every time you buy peanut butter, read the labels. So if you see a label that says uh, natural sugar or natural sweetener, or obviously xylitol, it can also be called birch sugar. Obviously, don't feed those to your dogs. But in and of itself, xylitol is that one added true toxin that we need to be really aware of. But because of that, people, because of all these myths online, people just naturally assume that they shouldn't be giving any nut butters. And that's unfortunate because it, they're safe and fine to eat. In fact, some of them um, can be a really great way to deliver a little bit of extra, extra nutrients. Well, what's, your, what's your favorite? Now that you dispel all of those myths on nuts, check it out, pet parents. When you're going in the aisle, you can go into the natural aisle and feel safe. Look, if you still want to purchase peanut butter, but you want to get a better version, let's say something organic, know that you're going to go home and something very high in protein and niacin and peanut butter pound for pound is like the cheapest. It is. And sunflower butter, lovely, high in vitamin E and A and magnesium. If you opt to do sunflower butter, try and buy organic, in my opinion. But I love sunflower butter. It's a great option. Especially for allergies at home. Look, walnut butter itself, the highest in omega-3 fatty acids, ALA. And almond butter, my personal favorite, high in minerals and fiber. It is the lowest in carbohydrates, lowest in saturated fat. Now, let me say this. For those websites online who are not updating their sites and saying, hey, man, only feed peanut butter because it's lower in fat. It could give your dog pancreatitis. Update your sites. Check out cashew nut butter. It actually has less fat. In fact, if you compare peanut butter to all the other butters, you're off by like one percentage point. There's a lot of myths out there. Yeah. So if you have an animal with pancreatitis, probably not nut butters. But other than that, nut butters are absolutely safe as long as they're xylitol free. Now, if you're taking our recommendation and you're going to stick with the um, stirrable type of nut butters, which means the non-additive, no, no extra hydrogenated oils or fats, because they're fresh nut butters, they expire quickly. And this is another thing that we didn't realize. So heads up, if you're buying these healthier choices, they don't last as long because they don't have those old additives and preservatives according to the USDA. You got one month to consume it once you crack the jar, if you're storing it in your pantry. If you're putting it in your refrigerator, yes, you can extend it to three to four months. I know it makes it harder and it may break utensils, which is why it pushes people to buy the hydrogenated versions of peanut butter. If you're hell bent on buying this type, well, according to the USDA, you've got two to three months with this type of uh, butter with its additives, and it's going to last six months in the refrigerator. But there is some good news here. There are some commercial companies who are a lot cheaper, if you're strapped for cash, that are now trying to be better. Look at Walmart Go. I just said look at Walmart Go. They've got one ingredient in their peanut butter, which is just dry roasted nuts. Or take a look at Smuckers, who's trying to be better, two ingredients, peanuts, and only 1% salt. So. If you're going to buy a commercially available nut butter, try and get one with just one ingredient. That's the take home message. Now, if you're like us and you think, okay, cool, 
those are more expensive. You actually can make nut butters at home and it's so easy. Like it's shockingly easy. So my suggestion is where you get the freshest nut butters with the most nutrients that you want to pass up the food chain, you can make nut butters at home yourself. And we actually put together a free, easy to download PDF. You can go to foreverdog.com. I have my favorite, easy, simple, step-by-step -step recipe for making. I like almond butter. You can use sunflower butter. You can use peanut butter, but you can pick the peanuts you want. You can get Valencia low uh, mycotoxin peanuts. You can make homemade nut butters really easily and simply by following the recipe here. We also have a list of all of the commercially available peanut butter brands that do contain xylitol that you want to watch out for. So both of those resources available for you uh, at a download. Thank you all for joining us. We wanted to dispel the myths that all nut butters were bad or that you shouldn't be feeding your dogs nuts. It's just not true. Done with the food fear and on to picking better quality nut butters for your dogs um, to be able to medicate them, stuff their Kongs and use them for pilling animals in a safe way that you can take a deep breath and not have any anxiety. Thank you for joining me, Robbie. Thank you for having me and so long, Thanks, Facebook guys. world. Hope that helps pet parents.